So I think we have nothing to worry about right now. Oh no! No! Oh my goodness! <laughs> Oh no, it's gone off again. How's that for accuracy? I think this could be one of the best boats I've ever built. Hello everybody and welcome back to episode 8 of my Stormworks career mode Let's Play. First of all, we're going to have a look at stage 1 of the brand new boat I've been building. Then we're going to go and do a mission because we need a bit more money and we have to pass a bit of time until we unlock the next area of research which is our giant propeller and the large engine as well. And then once that mission is done, we should be able to then install the new propellers and engines finish the boat and prepare it for the next missions ahead. So let's head into the workbench and take a look at stage one of my new build. Okay, here she is then guys. And as I said before, there are two missions which I'm thinking about when I'm building this boat here. The first one was towing the tanker mission. So I'm gonna need some good power to get that tanker from A to B in the right amount of time, which is about an hour and a half I think you get for that mission. Um, the other one I'm thinking of is uh, extinguishing the fire on the observatory. So that's why this deck here is quite high up and to be honest it's quite a difficult mission to do if you are down at sea level. So that's why we're going to have the fluid cannon right up here on the front. I'm going to raise it even more maybe, not the whole deck but just the actual the cannon itself. I might raise that up a bit. Here we have the funnel and at the moment I'm just using six fluid ports, the, the small ones here, but they will turn into big ones when we've unlocked them. Here are the air intakes which again I haven't got the big fluid port yet so <laughs> we're just stuck with two for now. And what else do we have? Some ladders to get up. This, of course, is going to be the bridge here. Underneath, there'll be some kind of room. Uh, another room at the back here. Um, this is going to be an outside walkway. Not quite sure what I'm going to do with this yet, but you'll be able to walk outside behind the bridge and uh, maybe get some viewing angles from there. I'm, I'm not sure yet. Uh, if we head down below them, we have two large propellers. Now, the research for those is about 20 minutes off. So what we're going to do in a minute, guys, is actually go and do a mission. And by the time we've done that, we've earned a bit more money, gained a few more points, and we'll have the propellers and the engines to go inside this thing as well. But there we go, and two propeller guards. Now, I haven't got the medium control surface unlocked either, but they will fit perfectly here. So for now, we have uh, six small rudders on either side, and then I've got an extra one at the back. But we'll have to test that to see if that's going to be enough uh, for now. I don't know what I'm going to have on the stern just yet, but probably a giant winch and some other bits and pieces. Maybe we could even have a land vehicle on here or some kind of helicopter when we get the parts unlocked for those. But that is it for stage one, guys. So now we're going to go and do a mission to pass the time so we can get the large engine and the giant propeller and all the rest of it. And get some extra money as well because I am going to need that extra bit of money. It's going to be quite expensive this with... Uh, I'm going for four engines now. Uh, two per propeller so that's going to be 40,000 just for the engines wait what look at look at the price of that engine guys has that changed I thought they were 10,000 each okay that's really weird so now let's go and check out the next mission so the research should be complete in a minute oh there we go guys shipping done so let's see what we want to do next then we're going to need the fluid cannon to go on our new boat and also we're going to have to have doors um, but that's not a priority really and also we need diving equipment as well that's very important this is so if I get the fluid cannon right now we'll actually start getting those missions those fire extinguishing missions so instead of that I'm actually going to get the diving equipment first which only takes about half an hour so this here will be the scuba diving kit and then from that we can unlock the diving gear um, which again is only, um, it takes 40 minutes, so that's not too bad. We've got plenty of points for that. And we get a huge winch as well, which we may use on the next boat. And then by the time that's done, we should be alright to get the fluid cannon and then start unlocking those missions. So as you can see guys, it's very choppy right now. It's about to be night time as well. And visibility is really poor. By the way, we now have a speed sensor on this boat. And that is reading knots onto the display here. But the mission we're going to do now is uh, retrieving equipment from the water and taking it up to the oil rig platform there. But that's just, you know, it's an hour and a half to do that one, very easy. We just have to be careful not to get uh, flipped over by the waves. But there it is on the map. And um, it's really, it's quite simple this one. There's a couple of different ways we can do this mission, but when we get over there, I'll explain what we're gonna do.
Okay, guys, so we're just approaching the oil rig now. And actually, you know, it's a bit calmer. It's going to get darker. The sun is setting. Um, but in a minute, we should... There we go. We can just about see the outline of it now. There we are. So at 61% throttle, we're doing 24 knots, 25 knots. Not bad. We'll just back off that throttle there. Okay, so the actual equipment is over there on the other side. We're going to go around the safe way, <laughs> just in case. Okay, there we go. There's the equipment. And if you just have a look up there, you see a big bucket with a crane. And that is what you can use to lift up this equipment. So that's one way you can do this. And that's actually what I'm going to do. Turn off the lights here. Actually, I might leave. It's really dark, isn't it? It's going to get darker. I'll leave the deck lights on. There we go. The other way to do it, as I'll just get going here, the other way to do it is actually just to literally climb up the ladder holding onto it. <laughs> and it, it is probably a bit easier and quicker to do that. So, yeah, it's really windy at the moment. Um, but hopefully the waves will not get any bigger than that. It has gone a bit calmer. And the darkness is setting in. Actually, this piece of equipment here is for a different mission, which um, we may do in the future when we've got some diving gear unlocked. That's one of the reasons I'm unlocking that diving gear first. Oh. Try and knock that off the edge. Come on. It's going. There we are. So I normally forget this, but uh, there are definitely controls on this thing. My goodness, it's, <laughs> it's pretty shaky, isn't it? There we go. Uh, are we getting stuck on something here? Being stuck on the... On the pillars. Okay, so all you want to do, really, is get down to sea level, don't want to go any further than that well, just a bit below it if we just go just under the water here if we just get the base of this lift under the water ok, good now one problem we've got here is that actually where we want to lift in the equipment, there's a big pillar in the way so we might have to lift it over the rails if possible, but let's go and get it it's already gone it's been swept under here already so that's why I park my boats just a bit away from the oil rig because they're the same. They're all just oh my goodness! I'm being I'm literally being swept around all over the place. By these waves. Okay, I've got it. I might actually grab both handles. You can you can hold both with Q and D at the same time. Q for one handle, E for the other. But I can't even grip it. Oh my goodness me! There we go got both it's really dark now um oh no and the whole thing is shaking that's terrible that is really not very good right we're going this way so there is our lift if this doesn't work guys i may have to drag it up the ladder <laughs> but we'll try and lift it over the railing oh my goodness yeah, there is a major problem at the moment in this game. Now it's stuck underneath. This is going terribly wrong. Okay, oh, it's on. That was completely luck, that was. <laughs> that was very lucky. Oh, no, it's gone off again. I'm not going to use two hands because this whole thing starts shaking about so badly. There we are. We're on. Right, please stay in. Let's use the up arrow. There we go. We're going up, guys. I'm holding on to it still because... There, that's better. Now, I don't know if the wind is going to affect this lift. It might do. Um, but the waves are far worse for it. So I think we have nothing to worry about right now. Ah, oh, apart from getting stuck on the ledge, which doesn't normally happen as far as I remember. Um, if we just force it up, we might be alright. Oh, this is not good. Oh, no! No! 
Oh my goodness. <laughs> How did that happen? Um, well, <laughs> I think suddenly, you know, I think there was a bit of elastic in those ropes and suddenly they just pinged up and, well, we're fine. <laughs> it kind of helped us, but that was a bit scary. Okay. Got launched into the air. And there we go. 12 research points, a multiply gate and five and a half thousand. That's very good. Very, very good. Okay. Now I'm going to do a quick search for crates around here because I'm not sure. Have I been to this one before? I can't remember. Maybe. So I'm going to do a quick search for crates, guys, in case we're lucky. And if I don't find any, then you'll probably see me heading back to base where we're going to look at stage two of our next boat. Ah, we meet again. I remember these two. What's happened to her arm? She's got a hole under her arm. Guys, I hope you can see that, but there's the boat over there. It's miles away. In the space of about five minutes or ten minutes, maybe, it's gone a long way. So now we're going to have to do some swimming. There it is. It's very hard to see, but... Yeah, there we go. Luckily, if I didn't leave the lights on, guys, well, I could use the map to find it, to be fair. Because on the map, of course, you have the uh, the icon for your boat there. But actually, without the map and no lights, I wouldn't know where that boat was. So, yeah, if you're leaving your boat around at night time, always put at least one light on. Um, but as I say, the map will also get you out of that bad situation. So I didn't find any crates at all on the oil rig, guys, but we have been there before, uh, so <laughs> it doesn't really matter too much. And let's have a look here. We've got 91 points, over 100,000 now, which is very, very handy. What was that? What just... What happened to the exhaust fumes? Oh, it's the wind blowing them. Ah, that's interesting. But I'm only getting smoke out of one side of the boat. Why am I getting smoke out of one side of the boat? That's very odd. I hope they're both working. Yeah, I don't have individual dials for each engine, so I'm not sure what the RPS is for all of them, but hopefully they are all running. Um, hang on a minute, we're turning right. I wonder if... Are these propellers working? Very hard to see, sorry about that, guys. But yes, they are. All the propellers are working. I think it's just the waves that's blowing us, or maybe the wind. But as we know, this boat likes to turn on its own anyway, and I'm not I'm not sure why, even in flat, calm water, so... I'm trying to keep it still here. Temperatures are fine. 18 knots. Using half throttle at the moment. Battery is full. RPS seems okay. I mean, it's a little bit high, but I haven't, you know, I haven't mastered the gearing situation on this boat yet. And we'll use about 300 litres of diesel, probably, on this whole trip, so that's pretty good. I have to say. I hope by morning visibility is much better. It's really not very good at the moment. Also, if the waves calm down, we can actually spawn a new boat in and walk around it so I can show you some features in first person mode, but I'm not sure if it's going to be safe to do that. It does feel calmer now, doesn't it, actually? No, it's definitely not calmer. Ah, diving equipment has finished being researched. Excellent. So I think next we should do deep sea diving, definitely, because that that um, outfit is so useful in career mode, guys. Yeah, we're going to do deep sea diving next because that is so useful. It's only 40 minutes, quite expensive, but it's worth every single point of that and more probably. So after that, we're going to get the fluid cannon unlocked, I think. Um, and then I do need like double sided buttons and doors, <laughs> one point for doors. So, but yeah, there are some priorities first. So we'll get those done and then see what we do from there. Oh, wow, we're really off course now. We are getting quite cold actually at this time of night, but I think, you know, that's just around midnight. When we, um, when you're an hour either side of midnight, you tend to get pretty cold, but it's generally fine actually. There we go, the freezing meter from the bottom right of the screen is gone, so I don't think we've got anything to worry about. Okay guys, so I'll catch up with you back at base when we're ready to look at build stage number two of the new boat. Right, one thing I will say guys, before I'm about to take the fuel out of our boat here, is that, well, first of all, this bug where you pick up connectors and things and they shake about a lot is <laughs> still there, as we can see back at the oil rig platform as well. But, uh, these things seem to be a lot lighter now. So if you're holding a connector and you want to jump, you can now jump kind of normal height, even when the rope is extended, for example. I'm not sure how it is when there might be fluid in a hose, but right now, look, I'm jumping to normal height holding this connector, and it's extended by about, I don't know, 20 metres or something. So it, they seem to be a bit lighter, and also, you'll see, I can probably jump 
maybe, well, a long way, so I couldn't, I couldn't reach the boat, but that's normal. I can jump a long way while holding a connector, which is a big improvement. So I think that must have changed in the most recent updates. There we go. Right, pump the fuel out. And it's working. Lovely jubbly. It's really calm now, isn't it? All the wind has gone. That's exactly what we want. Only, is it raining? Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's raining now. There's always something, isn't there? But never mind. I quite like the rain in most games, actually. There we go. Back to over 25,000 litres in the tank. And this is almost done. So it won't be long until the sun rises. And then, yes, we can actually have a look at build stage two of the boat. And we can spawn it in, hopefully, safely without worrying about it breaking. And, um, yeah, we can take a look at it floating in the water. Get rid of that. How's that for accuracy? Okay, here we are then, build stage number two, and I'm pretty happy with this so far, guys. A lot of this will be subject to change, of course, but I'll show you around what we have so far, and, um, and then we'll head into build stage number three, where it should be not necessarily finished, but ready for the missions that we are building it for, okay? So first of all then, here is the winch we're going to use to tow the tanker. Um, it's quite small compared to the, the size of the actual boat and the deck here, but... You know, it, it may change in the future, but this is fully working now using the new winch system since the update. So here we have an electrical anchor here and then a, an electrical connector underneath so it locks into place. A weight block so it sinks down because without this it literally just floats in the water. It doesn't even sink a, a couple of meters. And then just an ordinary connector underneath. And now we come to the bow of the boat and here I've got an anchor. I've got one at the stern as well, which we'll have a look in a minute, but it's exactly the same actually. So I've got a medium winch here, um, same as last time, as you can see down there, I'm actually locking it in place with these electrical connectors. And then underneath we just have a, uh, a single mag there. So at the stern, exactly the same setup with the anchor, but it's underneath this little kind of um, overhang here. And that is so that we can use the towing winch um, separately and it w they won't interfere with each other, hopefully, that's the idea anyway. So this one actually overhangs the, the platform a bit and under here that's tucked away. And, you know, normally they should be fine. We'll have to test it under mission conditions, but it should be fine. It, um, you know, it's, it seems to be pretty good. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep this arch here. I was initially going to have this for a winch, for the towing winch. But if you tow things from a high up position, um, it's going to make the stern sink down and the bow rise up, you know, because of the, the way the physics will work with that. So I'm not sure if I want to winch that high, to be honest. But I may well have something here instead in the future. But that's something we, we don't need straight away. So that part will be a work in progress. Now, how can we ignore the superstructure? Before in build stage one, this was only a basic frame. There was nothing there. But now we have a bridge. We have um, various different areas, different rooms within that superstructure. Got ladders. Let's go and have a quick look around then and see what we've got. First of all, down here, there's a small room with nothing in it. I mean, none of these rooms have anything in apart from the bridge at the moment. Um, here's the air intakes. I've modified them a bit. Now these archways here add a bit of detail to the boat, however they're also really just for walking round to the bow um, from the bridge. So here is going to be where the fluid cannon is and then you'd be able to access this area really easily from the bridge very quickly without going down and back up again. So that's the, that's the thinking behind that. Um, here is the bridge, this again is subject to change, but the anchors are now fully working so I'll show you that later guys. And also we've got, you know, light switches, uh, a clutch and a throttle there, um, compass and various dials and things. They're not all plugged in yet, so I think only the anchors are plugged in at the moment, but of course it will all be working eventually. Now if we go down here, well, first of all, I've extended these platforms on the side um, with a little railing there. Now that is a, a case, if you've seen my wanted features video, I think it was the first one I made, possibly. Um, yeah, about ropes and things. I was talking about cleats, and there is a, an example of a cleat, which is, of course, not usable right now. But uh, it's there in case in the future we can have proper cleats that work. Um, but under here, not only do we have the ladder to get up, but I may, if I just show you here, I may actually uh, put a door or a, a walkthrough, um, possibly have a large opening here, for example, and, you know, another way to get into the ship, but also um, possibly a unique room on either side of the boat down there. 
Okay, now under the bridge, I've got a couple of doors here which we had in stock, but I haven't researched them yet. So to get infinite doors, I, um, I'll need to do a bit of research. We also need double-sided buttons, so they really, they don't work too well for this just yet. But in here, um, quite a large room actually, and then a further room down here, which could be used for beds or a, a medical room, that kind of thing. We'll see how it goes, but I'm sure we'll, we'll fill it up with something. More cleats up towards the bow. We have a ladder to get onto that superstructure as well there. We've got some lighting here as well. We don't really have much in the way of lighting just yet, but we have those and we have nav lights as well. So right now we're at the bow and I know it's a bit dark guys, so sorry about that. But what we have there is a couple of bow thrusters. Um, again, they may change, but if they work, then I'll just use them for now. And um, you know, in the future we can build them into the keel properly, for example. And they are just powered by two small electric motors, one for each propeller there. So that should be fine. Now in the hull, as we're in here, might as well talk about that. Um, this is the fuel tank actually, and what I've decided to do, because initially I had a tank which was on top of this, um, this flooring here. But what I've decided to do now is put it inside the keel. So if we go down here, this is the fuel tank. Now, it is not huge, this one, but the idea is that I can easily extend it as far as I want, and I'm not going to need it the whole length of the keel. Um, but, you know, I'm not, I haven't actually measured this area yet. So hopefully it's enough for the missions that we are intending to do, but if not, it's very easy to double it or triple it and more. Okay, guys? And then here we have one, at the moment, just one large battery because they are expensive, and then four diesel engines here, four large engines, um, quite neat and tidy. I may actually turn this into a proper engine room at some point and the engines may move around but the reason why they're right at the stern is because if you look at the center of mass here it's about in the middle of the boat right now and uh, the the bow is obviously very very heavy this whole area up here is very heavy because um, that's where most of the stuff is so i have to balance it out by putting the engines at the stern here and they've got their own sort of ceiling like inner ceiling here because I can deal with pipe work and maybe microcontrollers and things that I don't want on, on show I can hide them away in this area so I've done that with a, a lot of the piping here um, and then the engine room will just look a bit more neat and tidy when we eventually get to it which I'm sure we will so yeah that that is actually it guys I, I think I've covered everything so far that we've changed and improved um, next will be build stage number three and in that stage we will then be ready to do our missions, okay? So, you know, in this episode, our boat will be ready to do the missions. It won't be a completely finished boat. We will still add to this and upgrade it over time in the coming episodes across the series. Because I think this could be one of the best boats I've ever built. So with that being said and done, guys, let's now head into build stage number three and see what I can come up with to get this ready for our two missions. Right then, she's in, guys. She's in the water. Let's go and take a look around. And I've made a few upgrades here, um, many in the bridge. I've upgraded the engines as well. So, oh, it's a bit dark around here. Okay, first of all, in this small room, I've just done a tiny bit of painting and added a couple of portholes on either side. But I don't know what to do with that one yet. Um, what have I done here? I've added uh, deck lighting all the way around, so some there and under these passageways as well. I've added cleats to the back here. And a couple of spotlights here as well, because if we're towing that tanker, it'd be really easy then to see what we're doing. So let's head on up here then, and see what we've done on the next deck. I believe these doors work now. Yes, they do. We don't have the double-sided buttons yet, but they work. Now, this is, of course, going to be much improved over the next uh, few videos. But, you know, just to begin with, we've got enough seating for passengers and a bed for myself if I need it. I may have to add a medical bed as well, actually. What have we got around here? So here are these archways that we have with the walkway on top as well. A couple of lights underneath those. Now this here is a mounting for, for a big spotlight, which I, I've got that light, but I don't have a robotic pivot so I can rotate it horizontally. So I'm going to leave it off for now. And I've just got, if we look here, I've got a smaller spotlight there um, above the anchor. So that's that spotlights here as well a couple of ladders to get up here i can't remember if we saw these before and racks on top as well i'm not using them just yet we're probably gonna have a horn up here maybe another spotlight uh one facing forwards and i'll have a spotlight facing reverse as well over the uh the aft deck as well and i'll probably have a wind sensor up here and various bits and pieces 
Now in the bridge is where I've made most of the changes I think. So I've extended this surface here all the way around the sides and eventually that is going to be full up with you know stuff. <laughs> but at the moment I've I've kind of all cramped it into this one area. I'm going to spread this out and it, I can reach the anchor controls for example from here and, and uh, the, the light controls as well. But it is a bit fiddly to get the right switch so I will have to move that around and I might stand them vertically actually at some point. Here we have an alarm and a, an indicator light for depth. So I do not have at the moment a distance sensor. So I'll have to unlock that. But that's where we'll read the depth. And then I have an indicator light which tells me if I'm within 10 meters from the ocean floor. And I've also got an alarm which tells me when I'm you know 2.5 meters shallow I think something like that over here I have a water detection system for the hull which you've seen on my other small boat um, it's exactly the same actually but this time we do have a buzzer unlocked so I can use that as well and then this button turns on the pumps here's the clutch and the throttle fairly standard on, on my sort of boats at the moment I may make that automatic actually at some point um, here we have reverse gear the engine start uh, gear 2 which is an efficiency gear and this one here is to turn the pumps on. Now that is actually pumps for fuel, air intake and exhaust um, and cooling actually as well. It's all done in one button there because I was really struggling for power and then I found out that I needed to add pumps, yeah, especially to the air intake and the exhaust and it gave me like twice the maximum speed I was getting, which is amazing to be honest. Um, and I'm only using the small pumps. It looks a bit untidy down there at the moment, but I will tidy it up in future episodes. Then here we have, because we've got four engines of course, so we've got RPS and temperature for all four engines, right side and left side. We've got speed and knots, a uh, fuel gauge, and here are bow thrusters, so I can actually show you those right now. Um, if we just... There we go. I've reduced their power to 50%, but I hope you guys can see that. We are moving. See the boat listing there. Yeah, they're pretty good. I could even reduce the power more, but they're only two small motors. And I just don't want them to use up too much battery power. But they seem absolutely fine at the moment. Up here, I'm not using this yet, but I did intend to have the engine start here and an engine cut off, uh, fuel pumps and, you know, things like that. And main power as well. So we may actually use that at some point, but we don't need it right now. It's not a priority. Now, light switches. At the stern, I've got two static spots, which I showed you earlier. That's those. One at the bow as well. There we go. These two switches don't do anything yet, but they will do. I'll um I'll add stuff to that eventually. We have also got instrument lights, deck lights. There's a view of all the deck lights we have at the moment. And then we've got nav lights as well. We have red, green, and a white. It looks kind of yellowy because I think it's just shining off the red there. <laughs> it is meant to be white. Um and then we also have bridge lights as well, which is very simple just uh, for. Now, what I do, guys, and I don't know if you find this as well, but of course, if you've got a light in front of you, um, it can make things quite difficult to see uh, your surroundings outside of the boat. So what I do is I put my lights behind me there, and that seems to work really well, actually. So that's how I've left it for now. Now, down here, I've got some microcontrollers. That's not all of them for the boat. That's just a few, um, but I'll, I'll show you the others in a minute when we get into the workbench. And here, of course, we have the position for the fluid cannon, as I've shown you before. We haven't unlocked it yet, but we will. And the reason why I haven't unlocked it just yet is because when you do unlock it, straight away that triggers your chance to get those related missions. And I want to just wait until I've got everything else ready first. But at the moment, we're actually researching the doors, so that's pretty handy. And I'm going to have to get the sensors as well. Um, next, that's only one point and 40 minutes, so they should be fairly easy to get. It just depends on if we get any missions before they are finished kind of thing you know but also this one here the firefighting equipment that is one that we are going to be getting very very soon actually here we have a number of microcontrollers addition to the ones in the bridge and these just control the pumps and the thrusters i believe here is the speed sensor at the bow and these are the bilge pumps which can get rid of any water if it comes into the hull so here's the fuel tank guys as you saw before but i've measured it and i now know that it's 10,500 liters and that is actually plenty for what we need at the moment but as I say, we can always expand that massively. We can double it or triple it possibly if we need to. I don't think we'll ever need to unless we go to the Arctic um, by this boat. Uh, yes, then we might need to do that. But that's the story with that so far. Then here are the pumps that I've added for the cooling. Um, and the uh, that's the air intakes there. I've got one pump for each of those. And then also here, I've got a couple of pumps for the exhausts. 
And then finally guys, I've done some painting for the propeller guards and the propellers and all of that stuff as well. But guys, that is all we've got time for today. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. There's plenty more videos on the way, guys. And next time, not only are we going to be doing a mission or two in this boat, but also I'm going to continue to upgrade it and improve it, and I'll bring you guys along the way. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Take care, and I'll see you next time.